Good morning and welcome to St. Patrick's Episcopal Church. Um, today is Trinity Sunday. It's the, the Sunday in the church year where we, we think about, we contemplate, we try to understand the, the mystery of the Trinity of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So with that in mind, um, I have this video that's absolutely one of my favorites about the Trinity that I'd like to share with you. After the video, our service will begin. Thank you again for being here. Welcome. I pray that this experience is one that allows you to experience God's um, grace and love in your life today and, uh, and, can, and, and brings you more deeply in the person God is calling you to be for this week and for the rest of your life. Okay, Patrick, tell us a bit more about this Trinity thing. Yeah, Patrick, tell us. But remember that we're simple people without your fancy education and books and learning, and we're hearing about all of this for the first time, so try to keep it simple, okay, Patrick? Yeah, real simple, Patrick. Sure, there are uh, three persons of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, yet there is only one God. Don't get what you're saying here, Patrick. Not picking up what you're laying down here, Patrick. Could you use an analogy, Patrick? Sure. Uh, the Trinity is like uh, water and how you can find water in three different forms. Liquid and ice and vapor. That's modalism, Patrick! What? Modalism, an ancient heresy confessed by teachers such as Noetus and Sibelius, which espouses that God is not three distinct persons, but that he merely reveals himself in three different forms. This heresy was clearly condemned in Canon 1 at the First Council of Constantinople in 381 AD, and those who confess it cannot rightly be considered a part of the Church Catholic. Come on, Patrick! Yeah, get it together, Patrick! Uh, okay, uh, then the Trinity is like uh, the sun in the sky, where you have the star, and the light and the heat. Oh, Patrick. Come on, Patrick. That's Arianism, Patrick. Arianism? Yes, Arianism, Patrick. A theology which states that Christ and the Holy Spirit are creations of the Father and not one in nature with him. Exactly like how heat and light are not the star itself, but are merely creations of the star. That's a bad analogy, Patrick. You're the worst, Patrick. All right, sorry. The Trinity is like... Uh, this three-leaf clover here. I'm gonna stop you right there, Patrick. Yeah, hold your horses, Patrick. You're about to confess partialism. Partialism? Yes, partialism. A heresy which asserts that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are not distinct persons of the Godhead, but are different parts of God, each composing one-third of the divine. And who confesses the heresy of partialism? The first season of the cartoon program Voltron, where five robot lion cars merge together to form one giant robot samurai, Obviously. I've never heard of Voltron. Of course you haven't. It's not going to exist for another 1,500 years now, Patrick. Yeah, get with the program, Patrick. All right, I'll try again. Uh, the Trinity is like how the same man can be a husband and a father and an employer. Modalism again. All right, then it's like the three layers of an apple. Partialism revisited. Fine. The Trinity is a mystery which cannot be comprehended by human reason, but is understood only through faith and is best confessed in the words of the Athanasian Creed, which states that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance, that we are compelled by the Christian truth to confess that each distinct person is God and Lord, and that the deity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one, equal in glory, co-equal in majesty. Well, why didn't you just say that, Patrick? Yeah, quit beating around the bush. Welcome to, again to St. Patrick's uh, this Sunday morning of Trinity Sunday. I pray that you are all well. I pray that you are staying safe. 
And I pray that, you, um, that, that, that this day and that this experience would be one that would reveal something to you about God's love and God's grace for you and your life today and always. <clears throat> um, as, as has become our custom, um, we will begin. Um, first, I have a message from uh, Amanda Foote, one of our vestry members. And then after her message, uh, we will gather ourselves and we will begin. Um, before we start that, I would like to make a few announcements. Uh, one very quickly about this evening's prayer service. Um, I told you guys when we started that last week, if the weather permits, we will meet. Um, obviously, today uh, there's lots of rain, and uh, you know I, I, I seriously doubt that we will meet. I will confirm that with an email later today. But um, at this point in time, I am guessing that we will not meet outside because the weather will not allow us. And also want to let you know, um, we will begin um, worshiping together inside the church on June the 21st. Uh, it will be a modified service. There will be some social distancing and other things. You'll learn more about that in the, in the days to come. I have a, a team of people who are working on it to ensure that we meet all the requirements that are, that are uh, laid out there for us by the diocese and by the state for us to gather together again. But please mark your calendars for June the 21st, and that will be our first Sunday together again inside the church. And also there was a survey that was sent to you via email yesterday. Um, I pray that you will, 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 will answer that survey because that will indeed give the uh, reopening team the information that they need to ensure that we are ready to go on June the 21st. So check your email. Um, please check out that link and please fill out that survey, one per family. So again, thank you for being here. Welcome to St. Patrick's. Uh, we will have this short message from Amanda Foote and then our service will begin. God bless. Good morning, everybody. My name's Amanda Foote, and I would like to thank you for joining our service this morning on behalf of the St. Patrick's Vestry. I hope everyone is doing well, safe, and have had a great weekend. Um, I have some good news. I've been told that our first in-person service back at St. Patrick's will be on Sunday, June 21st at 10.45 a.m. So I look forward to seeing all of you then, and I know everyone is excited to get back together and worship together um, to what we're accustomed to doing. Um, we did have an evening prayer service last Sunday. It went very well, and we are going to continue that and have another evening service today at 6.30 p.m. So if you are able, please come and join us um, for an outside prayer service and then a short social gathering for all of us just to kind of get together and connect with each other in the way that we can right now. Um, I know that I've been in contact with several of you and the vestry has been doing the same with all of our church members. It's just our way of um, touching base with you and we certainly appreciate those conversations and letting us know that everyone is okay. Um, during this time, if you have any needs, please feel free to reach out to me, um, any of the vestry members or Father Ashley directly, and we will certainly do what we can um, to assist you in your time of need. Along that vein, um, the church's mission continues, and although we've operated a little differently, I think we have all done a wonderful job of following our mission to welcome and gather and serve and share, and we can do that anywhere we're at, um, whether we're together or apart or remotely. Um, it's something that we can all do, and so I would encourage you to continue to give to the church during this time um, as our services are still available and we're still operating, and um, to please keep up with your pledge. I know I signed up online uh, for a weekly gift, and it was super easy and just makes um, me feel better that I have continued to do that as crazy as everything has been um, and been able to keep up with that. So I encourage you to please do so. Um, I just want to close by saying that I look forward to seeing all of you very, very soon um, back in person. And please continue to follow your mission and the church's mission and God's mission. And that is to love, love everyone in the way that God loves us. Um, and, and stay well. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Amanda, for, your, for that message and for that information. Um, again, um, our service begins now, guys. It will, it will begin on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. But as always, our service will, um, our video will contain everything in it that you will need for worship. 
Um, so we'll take just a moment, gather ourselves, and we will begin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to You all hearts are open, all desires known, and from You no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of Your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love You and worthily magnify Your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Together we will sing the Gloria. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you <clears throat> in your one and eternal glory. O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. If you are standing at this time, I would invite you to be seated for the lessons. A reading according to Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. 
and it was so God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seeds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see and every tree with seed in its fruit God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I've given every green plant for food and it was so God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 8 in unison. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? 
You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. A reading from 2 Corinthians 13, 11 through 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worship him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, again, welcome to St. Patrick's. I'm very glad that you have joined us this morning. I pray that you are doing well today, and I pray that, uh, that you are, you're making it through the continued chaos of the world. Um, <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, today is Trinity Sunday. It's that it's that Sunday of the church year that every preacher loves to preach. <laughs> it's that year where we're, where we're supposed to tell you exactly what the Trinity means. And if you were able to see the video at the beginning, I, uh, I, I love the part where at the, finally at the end, Patrick finally just says, all right, it's, a, it's an act of faith. It's mysterious. It's not something we can understand, but it's just a, it's something we have to live into. Um, and if you didn't see the video back at the beginning, I would commend you when this is over to, uh, to run it back and to watch the little exchange. It's a little cartoon between St. Patrick and two Irishmen. It is, it is quite good, but, but his definition of the Trinity is the reason I love the video. And, and it is Trinity Sunday, and it's the day that we try to sit and contemplate and think about the Trinity. And I love the way the Holy Spirit is continually moving in the life of the church. Because as I was thinking through this week, as I was thinking about all of the stuff that's in these readings, as I was thinking about uh, what to say about the Trinity, and then I was thinking about what's going on in the world around us, it seems like these are all perfect passages. This is, this is like the, the Spirit has pulled up the exact readings that we need in this moment. The Spirit is working and moving. My second year teaching, I was taught at Fairhope Middle School, I taught 7th and 8th grade science, and at the end of my second year of teaching, I did not get renewed. Um, I was still a non-tenured employee, which means that they didn't have to have a reason, um, they just chose to not renew my contract, which means that at the end of my second year of teaching, I no longer had a teaching job. <clears throat> now this is one of two times in my life that I have been unemployed, and um, and it's not fun, and it's not enjoyable, and I know that many people in our current context are dealing with that exact thing. But the thing that I remember feeling the most was alone. Like, how am I going to do this? How are we going to get through this process? I remember I went and interviewed with the, sheriff's, um, with the sheriff of Baldwin County to possibly become a sheriff's deputy, <clears throat> and the interview went okay, 
but, um, but it obviously just wasn't, he, he, he didn't see something in me or whatever the case might be. Um, I had a couple of other interviews and I, I was really working hard trying to reach out to people, trying to figure out how to make this next step happen. I really wanted to still be in the classroom, but really didn't know how to make that happen. was reaching out to people and couldn't get them to reach back out to me. And then it happened. I got a phone call one day, a few weeks after I had been non-renewed, from my former high school football coach, who was now the principal at Gulf Shores High School. He'd just been hired at the, as the principal, and Gulf Shores High School was going through some transition. <clears throat> and he called me and he said, Ashley, I want you and I want Annie to come and work for me at Gulf Shores High School. Here was this situation that I couldn't figure out how to get through. I couldn't figure out what was going to be next. I couldn't figure out what it was going to look like, the next steps, the next place. I, I couldn't make it work by myself. It didn't matter how hard I pushed or how hard I tried. I just couldn't do it. And then Coach Tyler calls. And all of a sudden, together, there's a way forward. Together, there's a way to navigate the situation that we're in. My grandfather was a, was, was a 27-year veteran, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, on the years. Served in the Army. Retired a sergeant major told us story after story after story growing up. And the thing I remember in those stories over and over and over again are the stories he tells about things that he did with the other men and women that he was enlisted with and how they did those things together, how they accomplished those things together. How it was their, their connectedness and their togetherness that allowed them to move through the difficulty that they faced. Recently, I was having a conversation with our football coach here at Zachary High School, David Brewerton, who knows that I used to coach football and who knows that I used to teach. And as we were talking, I told him, you know, the only thing I really miss about coaching is the peace in the locker room and in the coaching office where you are figuring out how to do next week's game plan, next week's actions, how, you, how are we going to find a way to win next week together? It's this, this togetherness that I missed in coaching. It's the one part of it that I miss sometimes. And if we're all really honest with ourselves, every one of you have had a situation like this or have been a part of a situation like this in your own life. <clears throat> Where the answer to the problem that lay before you or before someone else required you and others or you and one other or some version of you being with someone else to accomplish the thing that you've set out to accomplish, to, to move from point A to point B, to get through the pain and the grief of a situation. I can't tell you how often when I speak with people about very difficult things going on in their life or that have gone on in their life in the past, that they'll say things to me like, I remember that this person was with me. I remember that this person stayed with me through this time. I remember that this person was there. Not what they said, not necessarily what they did, but that they were there. That in the midst of pain and struggle, this person was there with me. And this theme is, is paramount on Trinity Sunday. On Trinity Sunday, we celebrate, we contemplate, we pray about, we spend time with the mystery that is the Trinity. We try to understand how God exists as Father, Son, and Spirit. And we can't. We can't make it make sense. It will not make sense. It'll never be something we completely understand. And we have to come to terms with that. But in the Genesis reading today, the long reading that Susan did so well, when he gets to the sixth day and he creates humans, 
I don't know if you caught it or not, but this is the creation story in chapter 1. You get the creation story in chapter 2 with Adam and Eve, but in chapter 1, on the sixth day, it says we will create them in our image. We will create them, male and female, in our image. We will create humans in our image. God creates humans in His and her image. I can only assume that when, when Scripture says that, that God says, let us create them in our image, that that, that our is the Trinity and is also the heavenly host. We will create them in our image. So what does it mean to be created in the image of a God that is a triune God that exists as Trinity? That within the Godhead, when we look to God, what we see is a God who exists in perfect unity between the Father and the Son and the Spirit. That in God we see perfected relationship. And I don't just mean relationship without flaw. Although certainly the relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, the unity that we see there, certainly doesn't have any flaws. But when I say perfect relationship, what I truly mean is a relationship that looks exactly like a relationship should look. That God, the God of relationship within Himself, the God who is Father, Son, and Spirit, in perfect, eternal relationship with one another. The God who loves perfectly created us in that image. Created us in the image of that loving God, of that perfectly related God, of that God who cares so deeply between the Father and the Son and the Spirit that even in the grave, the Father, through the Spirit, seeks the Son and finds Him. This is the Easter story. We're created in the image of a God that is internal, perfected, loving, compassionate, caring relationship. Now we are not triune beings. We do not exist within ourselves. We, although we need to learn how to love ourselves and forgive ourselves, are not in relationship with ourselves the same way that God is in relationship within the Trinity. But we're created in the image of that eternal, perfected, loving, compassionate relationship. So what does that mean for us? And the only thing I can come to is that when Coach Tyler called me those years ago, that when my grandfather told me those stories about being in the military with people and that it was together that they overcame things, that when I hear you tell me stories about how, how moments in your life, people in your life have empowered you to move through places, to overcome obstacles, to be the person that you have been created to be, it suggests that for us to truly look like the image for which we have been created, for us to truly look like the perfected, compassionate, loving, eternal relationship that we see in God the Trinity, that we have to have one another, that we must have one another. It's not just some pleasant thing that we say. It's not just some nice notion that we think about. It's not just some, some, some grandiose, idealistic idea. But that we have to have each other. We have to be in relationship with, uh, with each other. That we must strive to love each other. Not simply so that we can wind up in heaven someday, but because that's what we were made for. Because our true happiness lies in becoming the person that God has created us to be. That our true joy is found 
when we live into the thing that God has made us for. And we cannot do that without one another. We cannot be who God made us to be without each other. I cannot be the person God intends me to be without you. You can't be the person God has created you to be without me and without one another. That we are required to love each other. Even the people that we disagree with, even the people that maybe even get on our nerves, but that we need them, that we need them so that we can become more and more of the creature that God has made us to be. And it's in this light of being created in the Trinity, it's in this notion and the reality and the, 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 the weight of that reality that I think that this lesson on this day, at this time, in our context right now is paramount. It's paramount because in our community, regardless of your political opinion, regardless of, of what you think about our society, regardless of how you view the world in our communities, our black brothers and sisters are telling us that they are hurting. They are telling us that things don't feel right to them. And it doesn't matter whether or not you agree with them. It doesn't matter whether or not you think that it's real. It doesn't matter what we believe in that regard. The creatures of God, the men and women that God created in His image, are telling us that for us to continue in relationship, that we need to look at it a little differently, that we need to think about it with more empathy, that we need to move into it with more compassion, that we need to try to consider another way, that we need to recognize that maybe things aren't exactly the same for a black man and a white man. Maybe the world doesn't exist exactly the same for a black woman and a white woman. Regardless of whether it does or it doesn't, those members of our community, our black brothers and sisters, are telling us something seems different to us. And in order for us to love them, in order for us to be the people that we have been created to be, in order for us to be the children of God, we have to have our brothers and sisters. We have to have our white brothers and sisters, our black brothers and sisters, our Asian brothers and sisters, our African brothers and sisters. We have to have all of them. It's only in relationship with them that we and they can grow into the people that God has made us to be. It doesn't matter what we think politically. It doesn't matter if the media didn't cover the story and give us all the information. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we think. It doesn't matter if we disagree. It doesn't matter if we think a lot of it is just a bunch of made-up stuff. It doesn't matter. What does matter is that people are out there, that human beings exist around us, and that we are called to engage in a loving relationship with every single one of them. And when we do that, it is faithful. When we step into that reality, we are stepping into the reality that God has created us for. It's hard. It's difficult, I know. And I'm not advocating for us to have dinner and lunch with people that we disagree with every single day. But what I am saying is that it's time for us as Christians, all of us, white, black, and every other type of human being on the planet, for us to seek genuine relationship with one another, for us to hear what the other has to say, for us to pay special attention for those who say, I'm hurting. It's the same exact thing that we do with our friends and family. When someone calls you and says, my day is going really badly. These things have happened to me. We don't tell them that they're wrong. We listen to them. We tell them that we love them. And we tell them that there's hope. We tell them that the world is indeed going to be okay. We tell them that they are going to be okay. 
our black brothers and sisters are saying the same thing to us. And as white people in the community, our response must be love. Our response must be one that says, I'm going to listen to you even if I don't agree with you. Even if I can't understand where you're coming from. I'm going to listen to you and I'm going to strive to love you because that's what I've been created for. And that mission doesn't change for any of us. It doesn't, it doesn't change at all for any of us. That's the same mission that we are all called to. And when we state step faithfully into the realities that God has made us for a relationship, that God has built us to love one another, that God has built us to seek out relationship with those that we disagree with, that those that, that we have completely different views from, when we, when we realize that that's who God is calling us to and that God doesn't care whether we're right and that God doesn't care what our political views are and that God doesn't care about what you think, but that God cares about did we love our neighbor? Do we love our God? Are we seeking to be the creatures God has made us to be? Are we seeking to be in relationship the way the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are in relationship? When we seek that, when we do that faithfully, when we move in that direction, all of the sudden the political views don't matter. All of a sudden, our societal understandings begin to change. And we realize that the only culture that we should be seeking is the culture of God's kingdom. We realize that the only justice that can possibly move us all into the people that we have been created to be is the justice of God's kingdom. We realize that God's kingdom is a place where we are all being called to where we're all being called to eternal relationship with one another, when we realize that our faithful work towards God's compassionate relationship with Him and with those around us changes us. It frees us. It frees us from all of those opinions that cause us to bicker. It frees us from all of those opinions that keep us stuck where we are. And a faithful move towards this compassionate orientation towards those around us empowers us to be the children God has made us to be. But more importantly, it empowers those around us to be the children that God has created them to be. I know that this time is difficult. I know that we disagree with one another. I know that some of us have different opinions. And I'm telling you today that it doesn't matter. That God has called us to love one another. God has called us to be His children. And we cannot do that without everyone. We cannot do that by ourselves. We cannot be who God has created us to be alone. For us to be the people God has made us to be. We have to have one another. For us to be the people God is calling us to be, we must live into His words in Genesis. He created us in His image. They created us in their image. They created us for life-giving, liberating, and freeing relationship with one another. And our duty as Christians is to seek that everywhere we go. It's not easy, but it is the most joyful thing that we can do in this life. And I pray that we continue to strive to do it well. And I pray that when we get to those hard places where it's difficult for us, that we faithfully listen to those around us, that we let our own judgment and our own bias go, and that we allow God's grace to empower us to love everyone, especially those that we disagree with. Amen. Together, let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, He rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. During the prayers of the people, we invite your intercessions in the comments. The prayers of the people are found on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world, especially for the congregations of our companion diocese in Tohoku in Japan. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. God, the people of this land, especially Donald, our president, John, our governor, and David, our mayor, and all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. God, the ministers of your church, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Morris, our bishop, James and Charles, our retired bishops, Ashley, our priest, and all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, who may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to the honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially those celebrating birthdays this week. Lewis, Chris, AC, and Veronica. To those celebrating anniversaries, John, Allison, Tommy, Pat, Susan, and John, Don. And those in the military, Christian, Tannis, Austin, Reese, Denise, Edward, Matthew, Denver, Jamie, and Chance. Grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to say the Lord's Prayer with the children of the church. Our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 
Amen. Amen. I will do it. Pray Jesus. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to exchange the peace in the comments below. Before I uh, offer you the final blessing and dismissal, just a few quick announcements. As I said before, um, I will let you know this afternoon uh, for 100% whether or not uh, we will have our outdoor evening prayer service. Um, if we do have it, you will also receive an email with the, uh, with the, the service in that uh, for you to bring with you. Um, also, again, June the 21st will be our first Sunday together again. Uh, there will be more details to follow via email and some videos that the uh, reopening team are working on. Um, but right now, what we really need your help with is uh, taking the survey that was sent out yesterday. So please fill that survey out. Um, and then also, guys, as always, I pray that you will continue to check in on each other. Um, let me know if you have any pastoral needs. You can reach me via email, ashley at stpatsla.org. Ashley at stpatsla.org. Or you can reach me on my phone, area code 225-800-2636. 225-800, amen. Um, and again, if you have any other concerns, you can reach out to me or you're welcome to reach out to any of our vestry members. You can find all of their email addresses on our website. Um, I pray that you're doing well. I pray that you will, well, you know, as we transition back into opening things um, up, I pray that you'll continue to be safe. Uh, and I pray that you'll continue to, uh, to seek to love your neighbor as yourself. Um, as always, guys, I miss you and I love you. And I'll see you soon. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.